one of the things that annoys me so much is when I see a console port come out, something along the lines of Metal Gear, um, and the reason I keep bringing Metal Gear up is because it was the last big game released, and when I look at that, it's an open world, tactical, stealth based shooting game, which has a lot of, uh, it has your own base, which you can make up and, and, and develop your own uh, army, really, and your own gadgets and your own weaponry, it all sounds brilliant, and it's so disappointing to actually play it after the build up of what it could be and when I see people giving it 10 out of 10 and fanboys killing themselves over defending it you know it's the damage that that does to the gaming industry because these developers when they look at that they're gonna think right so when we release an open world game it doesn't have to be really open world to get 10 out of 10 it can be just this half-assed game yeah. with mountains that you can't pass mm. it's not even very big oh and by the way there is nothing in the world other than the enemy soldiers yeah there is nothing right. no civilians because afghanistan's been sucked dry of civilians of course you know it's lifeless it's well, soulless it's got no immersion whatsoever and this is a triple a 50 pound game and when i see people supporting that it, it makes me want to cry because i think what message does that send to other developers they're not going to try i mean you know what if i was like a half a far cry developer i'd be sitting thinking what the f are we doing making this amazing world mm. when we can just make this empty shell like what metal gear's done yeah. and people are still going to give it 10 out of 10. well i mean compare it to fallout 3. Yeah, i mean that fallout was that 3. was even even though it was post-apocalyptic so they could have gotten away with basically having nobody yeah it was it, they managed to strike a balance not only were the graphics mm. really good and i don't mean the graphics, the, I mean, the graphics were good, but I mean, the, the content of the world, the, the, the world was so detailed, and I mean, anyone who's played it, and I'm assuming most of you have, if you haven't, then you should buy it right now and stop watching this video. Mm. Well, no, watch the rest of the video then. And but, buy it from the link on Green Man Games. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about sellouts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that game, the, the, everywhere you looked, it doesn't matter where you looked in that world, you could point, you, you point your character at anything, and there's detail everywhere. Yeah. It was jam -packed. A lot of love went into that a game. A lot of love went into that game. It was jam-packed. And even though it was a post-apocalyptic world, it felt... Uh, somehow they managed to get the balance perfect, where mm. you felt alone. You had that post-apocalyptic alone feeling, but yeah. there were still pockets of civilization around. Fallout, 4, uh, Fallout uh, New Vegas didn't do as well with that, in my opinion. But Fallout 3, spot on. Perfect. Lovely. So as I was saying, fanboys... So yeah, fanboys kind of ruin gaming, even though they actually think they're doing good to gaming by defending certain games. I mean, another thing that I've had a lot of criticism over is people saying, I'd love to see you try to write a game. That's, so, but that uh, goes back to my point about how gamers are not game developers. Yeah, but, you can review something without actually doing it. And that's like basically saying, um, being angry at a doctor because he killed your mother because he botched the operation on her kidneys. It's like, well, I'd like to say you would do a kidney operation. <laughs> no. I haven't been trained as a doctor. I haven't been trained as a doctor. Yeah. That's not my job. Yeah, exactly. My job is not to operate on kidneys. My job is to stand there and say, why did you kill your mother? That's yeah. basically what, what, what that's, that's about. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's you know, I haven't gone through college and university trained to be a computer programmer and put yeah. a game out there. So, yeah. you know, my job is to critique that kind of stuff. My car so, broke down. It's so shit. I'd like you to see you make a better car. It's not a Volkswagen, is it? You know what I mean? No. Let's, let's go there. But, let's you know, sell that's, it. That's... Volkswagen? Have you seen what they've done? They've been lying about their emissions, uh, emissions tests. Yeah. yeah. 40%? When your car's getting tested for emissions, this software kicks in and brings them down by 40% to pass the test. Then it goes around polluting the atmosphere that's after that. That's ridiculous. And they've got billions? What a disgrace. Honestly, what kind of a fucking world are we in? I know. Oh, I don't... hope they get... I we've got to keep go this, bust. We've got to keep this on games. Yeah, if you guys do. want to see us do a separate video on real life <laughs> issues, oh, then please comment because we have lots oh, and yeah. lots of content to give you if that's what you want. Anyway, let's move on to, to uh, <coughs> DLCs and pre-order bonuses. DLCs and pre-order bonuses. That is a video on its own. Mm. That sweet Jesus. Now the oh. first one we're going to look at is Just Cause Three. Yeah. I, and, oh, and, and Mark has. Yeah, you. I seen have this, not you? seen this. I told him about it off camera. Because I found this out the other day and I was appalled. No, I haven't. I don't know what the idea. Well, told us about Just Cause Three, but I don't know about Just Cause Three. Looks like so. a canny game. I mean, Just Cause Two was great. It was fully open world, brilliant. I mean, look, read the thing, the review at the top. With over a thousand kilometers squared. <coughs> wow, that's a big world. Yeah, of complete freedom from sky to seabed, 
Rico Rodriguez returns to unleash chaos in the most creative and explosive ways imaginable. Right. There's not much to it, no. but because pretty much everybody knows what Just Cause is. The popular yeah. tags, open world, action, adventure, destruction. Yeah. Totally, you know, anyone who's played Just Cause 2 can totally relate to that, yeah. It comes out December the 1st. Yeah, so now, right, it comes out December the 1st. Now, you can pre-purchase it for 35 99 We're on the Steam page now. You can pre-purchase it for mm-hmm. th- um, 35.99. However, you can also pre-purchase Just Cause 3 XL, and what do you get which is fifty three ninety eight. where it tells you it includes Just Cause 3 and Just Cause 3 DLC Air, Land and Sea Expansion Pass. So the rest of the game that they've already made. Yeah, basically, they already have the DLCs. <coughs> yeah. They already know what's going in them. And they're releasing them as separate things. So if you want basically the full game, it's fifty three ninety eight. Yes, like that, that's what it says. Or you could upgrade. Purchase. Yeah, the pre purchase. You could, if you purchase the game already and you want to upgrade to the XL, you've got a seventeen ninety nine thing. You can upgrade to the thing now. If you click on the Just Cause Three DLC Airland and Sea Expansion Pass, it'll take you to Just Cause Three Expansion. There, the content requires the base game, so it's the downloadable content available first of December. It's a separate page. It's seventeen ninety nine. It's there already. Scroll down about this content. The Air Land and Sea Expansion Pass includes three incredible DLC packs and exclusive flame wingsuit and parachute skins, which no fan will want to miss. It's never uh, over, Rigo. It's never over for Rigo Rodriguez. Well, it's not even started, mate. So what's that shit about? Explore Medici, which I'm assuming is the name of the island, with three new game-changing explosive experiences, including new action pack missions, new missions. What are you talking about? The game's new. The games are out. New enemy types, weapons, gadgets, and unique vehicles that transform the Just Cause world. Well, well, we wouldn't even know it's transformed because we haven't even seen the world yet because yeah, the games are out. Now. The three item packs <coughs> will become available post-launch and will unlock seven days early for all pass holders. The skins will unlock day one. So basically, not only have they already produced this content, it's all ready to go, right? They are holding it back. To keep interest in the game, it's like it's like what That's I was saying about the early access. Yeah, it's like what I was saying about the early access. All the sales come in and then sales dry up. But this is their way of basically keeping the game interesting, which is not a problem. I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with is the content that's already done, but they're purposefully taking it out of the game. Mm-hmm. It's stuff that's been developed. Now, my idea of DLC is something that you can imagine. All the all the all the developers are in the office. They're working feverishly hard to hit the deadline. The game's going to come out on first of December. They're putting in all this content, they're, they're, they're polishing the game, putting the levels in, all this, right, the game's finished, great. Send it to Gold Disc or whatever it used to be called, and then it comes out first to December, great. Right, now we're sitting on our asses, the game's out, what do we do? Let's work on some more content, and we'll charge them some more money. Great, okay, I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. Exactly. They work on some more content, they put some new missions in. Oh, what do we not have time to do before the deadline? Oh, we'll do it now. Oh, we could add some more, like, wingsuits in, we could add some more vehicles. Yeah, do it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We can charge them an expansion for that. You know, five new vehicles, whatever. Some more missions as well. Yeah, oh, you mean, you know what I mean? Oh, an extra island, maybe. Yeah, throw it in, all that shit, it's all good. We'll just charge the money. And that's fine, again, I don't have a problem with that. That's but how it what used I, to be. Exactly, that's how it used to be. What I do have a problem with is when they're doing that now, the game's not even out yet, and they're working on this content, and they're basically, they're dividing their time. Yeah. So the, 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 so this is factual, you can't get around this. They, they, they are actually, actually dividing their time between I, the two... Yeah. Things, developers. When, uh, when I did know? my first video, sorry, when I did my first video on the state of the gaming industry, I touched on this, and there was a guy in the comments. I know what he's going to say. Absolutely slated me yeah. because I suggested that they plan out on a whiteboard the DLCs before they even start making the fucking game because they. Well, this is exactly what happened. plan because yeah. you have to as a business. Yeah. You can't just throw stuff together on a whim you have to work out how long it's going to take to do the base game how long it's going to take yeah. to do the dlcs what we're yeah. leaving out of the base game to put in the dlcs it all has to be planned in a business plan before you even yeah. start coding the game it's like making a movie making games now and they don't just i mean when they make a movie they don't just turn up on the set and say right watch your film now are oh, you <laughs> point the camera at, at brad pitt and brad pitt turn to angelina jolie and say um i want to have your babies it's like yeah. that's not how it works they have a storyboarding system. The, the, the exactly. movies get planned years in advance before. But it's like they even the videos that I've done 
you've helped me out on videos where yeah. I have a storyboard and we've gone through and filmed each scene on a certain day and then yeah. you put it all together. It's all got to be done properly. You can't just throw shit together like yeah, what I mean, we're doing now. Yeah. I mean, this is, yeah. this, this is... This is thrown together. All we did was note down a few titles on a notepad file and we're reading it and we've got early access survival games. We've just got stuff to cover. But that's because this works like this. That's, but this, is yeah. just, this is just a podcast. It's completely in a different league. It's nothing to do with anything like exactly that. Right. But the fact of the matter is, these developers are sitting there and they've got the time divided, essentially, between... I mean, you can, you can simplify it by basically saying, right, half the developers work on the game, half the developers work mm. on the DLCs. Mm. It's, that's clearly simplifying it and oversimplifying it. But the fact of the matter is, it may as their well time... Be. It may as well be. Their time is being less spent on producing the yeah. game that you're still paying full price for. And they're, 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 they're using some of them to produce games that you're going to then pay extra for. So it's their way of essentially you know charging why? more for the base game. They can't get away with charging you 60 quid for the game on a PC. Yeah, exactly. Because everyone would turn around and say, that's ridiculous. So what they do is, they split it up into a DLC. And that's what they've done with Just Cause. Oh, the game's 35 99 Oh, well, that's reasonably priced, even though that's not even reasonably priced. Yeah. Is, but that's reasonably priced. Yeah, 35 99 for a game. Oh, but if you want the DLCs, it's an extra 18 quid. Oh, well, the DLCs, that's fair enough. Yeah, no, it's not. You're basically paying 55 quid for the game. If you want the full game, it's 55 quid. If you want a cut-down version of the game, it's 35 quid. And that's what's happened. And yeah, you can get people turn around saying, well, well, well yeah, but you're just entitled. That's the defense. That's the only defense that these people have. Oh, you're just self-entitled. Yeah. You're self-entitled. You, you want you want everything for free. The it's base like, game nah. is cool. Yeah, the base game is cool. That's the game, and you want everything in the game. When does it stop? Where well, it stops, basically, on their deadline. And they, these people they, are damaging the gaming industry yeah. by buying into this bullshit. Yeah. Call of Duty, for example, the game's £50, but the DLCs come to £70 or £80. Yeah. It, it's more than the fucking game. It it's absolutely... And look at Juice X. We've just been looking at Juice X. And the actual um, pre-bonuses for that are based on how many people pre-order the fucking yeah. game. The pre-order system for that is so convoluted, it's just ridiculous. You don't even know what you're looking at, man. And you're getting all these things. Oh, if it, up to 25% of the tier, it goes tier 1 to tier 5. And, and you know, the more people who pre-order it, then the more content that they put in the pre-order bonus. Content that they've con already made. All, all content they've already made. And all that con and because they've already made it, do you think that's going to go to waste? They're not going to think, oh, well, not many people have pre-ordered it. What we're going to do with the content? Well, we'll throw it away. We're not going to do it. Well, it's clearly going to be sold afterwards. Mm. So pre-order is just a way of basically getting all your money as, as quick as possible. So before the reviews come out. It's here before the reviews come out because, you know, it, it's it, they avoid all the system of where, um, if it gets slated in the reviews, that um, that they avoid all that. Right? Yeah. It it's it is it's it's disgust it's yeah. a disgusting practice and the only way to stop it is to stop people buying it and that's never going to happen gonna because happen. these fanboys yeah. are just fucking idiots yeah. who will just and they defend it and I want to go and uh, well no, I don't well, I'll cut that out <laughs> uh, they defend it and it just annoys the hell does and I'll tell you why it annoys me is because when I look around the internet I look on YouTube I look on review sites I hardly see anybody criticizing it. It's like everybody's yeah. fucking brainwashed Every, into this new just way. That that's what it is. Well, I haven't fucking accepted it. Yeah, I know. and but I never will else has. ever. Everyone else has. But the thing is, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, well, I mean, because of all these people, like you like you say, it's like it's every. They're all enablers. Everyone who buys these pre-order bonuses and DLCs, they're all enablers. I have never pre-ordered a game, and I would never. I would never pre-order a game. Not day one DLC. I wouldn't. Well, well, that in itself. But I would never even pre-order a game because I I want to see it in action. I don't believe. Tr I don't believe even believe gameplay trailers anymore. It's nonsense. Nah, this because shite. they're controlled so yeah. so well. Unless I see some YouTuber like me or you playing the game, then I don't believe it. That's that's what I look for. I don't look for a gameplay footage from the developer themselves because. They're clearly biased. Yeah, it's a biased um, example, and so they're going to sit there. What did I see the other day? I saw a video the other day, and it was a, it was a guy going through. I can't remember what game it was, but he was playing the game. But he was going through. Oh, it was Assassin's Creed. Um, Black Flag. No, it was after that. It, it, it's another one. It's another Assassin's Creed that they're churning them out. Yeah, because they've got the engine, they've got the system, and it was basically about a, a free black slave. And oh, you, right, you yeah. play as this ex-black slave guy, and he's going back to his homeland to free all of the other slaves, and um, and, and he's and he's more brutal, like because he's got he's got like a blunderbuss, and he's and he's more like an outward uh, kind of like a uh, full-on combat kind of guy rather than an assassin. And and but ever, it was all the same. It was the same game. It's the same, same game. game. It was, all he, of the same. The, yeah, they are all the same. And he had the like same Call stuff. of Duty. 
Exactly. People have said, are you going to review Call of Duty Black Ops 3? Well, I might as well review any uh, Call already, of Duty already after Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, I already re- move, uh, did Modern Warfare 2. It's the same game. And, but the thing is, this guy was like, this, this developer guy was saying he was talking about freeing the, freeing the slaves in a cage. Basically, you had these slaves in a cage and uh, and <coughs> you had two guards on it. And he's around the corner and he's like, so this is what I can do. Either I can go like run in and full force and take out the guards like this and then take out that guard. Or I can go in stealth and I can sneak up around and do this and blah. And he was using all these buzzwords again. And, uh, and it was just basic. Anyone who's played Assassin's Creed, it was just a typical kind of one of those side events that appear in the street like where I'm playing Assassin's Creed 3 at the minute and it's one of those things where it's like oh protect the civilian from the Templars or something and there's like maybe like about five or six of these guards around them pushing the civilian around and it's on every street corner there's a civilian being pushed there around is. by the same generic guards yes. and you go up and you attack them kill them and then the guy says oh thank you very much sir there's 20 coins thanks mate see you, see you later and that's it that's all it was it was just slip but except and then instead of people pushing the guy around it was slaves in a cage they should have got a YouTuber to do it. They'll just pay them to do it. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a load of YouTubers would be quite happy to do oh, that. They'd be very happy to be like, you know, they'd be happy. Oh, do you want to come down to the offices and, and kiss the boots of our uh, developers? Oh, yeah, can I, I mean, get their autographs as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, if I ever go to PAX or E3, you'd get thrown out. I would. They, I they'll would. have they'll have pictures of me out. on the wall uh, saying, "Do not let do this, not man, let this in. man in." With your little number above your chest, almost like you've been arrested. Do not let this man in. He tells the truth. <laughs> this is a house of lies and truth tellers are not welcome. It is, no, it is. House this is a house of, of a house of lies, boot kissing and sucking up. There's no, there's, there's no regulation in the gaming industry. Oh, there is in there, be, yeah. there is in the movie industry. Yeah. There's regulation, but there's nothing yeah, in the, there's game nothing industry. In the game industry. It's it's absolutely people can it's run right. rampant at the minute yeah. and it's all about money at the yeah. end of the day. You've got people do you know what's sad? You've got people at the head of the biggest gaming companies that fing hate gaming. The money men yeah, and the money women. Men, that's all they are. And yeah. these are calling the shots on what goes into a game. The the games that we played through the last say ten years, well, sorry, ten years ago and beyond, they didn't have DLCs. We paid for the whole game. Half Life, for example, we got the whole game. But look at how many add ons Half Life had. There was Blue Shift, there was um what was that Half Life Two? Half Life One was Blue Shift. Bl- Half Life Blue Shift was uh, you play as a security guard. That's right, you played yeah. as a but all these were great because they weren't even conceived when the game was released. Yeah. They it were was just stuff that was made after as a completely stand like separate. Yeah, kind they, of they thing, looked yeah. and thought, "Hang on, we've released a great game here. Mm-hmm. People are buying it, so let's and they want more. We yeah. want more. For example, Mad Max. Let's I was looking for a Mad Max DLC the other day. I'm almost done with right. the game, but I want more. Yeah. And you know, I want them to make another DLC mm-hmm. and a bit more stuff going on because well, I'm loving the see, game. Fallout Three did the same thing. Fallout Three DLCs. I don't mind them because their content that's clearly done as a bolt on. There was like I think it was four or five. There was did. still a long time after the release. Oh, of the right, Operation game. Anchorage. There was a few of them basically, and mm. uh, and they, I mean, whilst I didn't really enjoy them that much um, personally, at least it was more because they kind of changed. The, the game, obviously, Fallout Three was open world and everything, but those ones were more on rails. It was mm. more like a kind of a kind of like a, a um, Call of Duty kind of you know walkthrough kind of yeah. thing. Sort of thing. Especially Operation Anchorage was more like Call of Duty. Where you you run through it was all action. It was completely different different genre in a way. Mm. Um, but still, it was the fact that it was it was done afterwards, so it didn't take anything away from the game, and it was an extra bold on people who wanted to buy it. Great, do it, get it, and that's that's what I don't have a problem with. But there's a fine line between that. Well, it's not a fine line. The line is basically if it's not been made after the game's released, then it's just money grabbing because that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the time that they have spent to make that game. You're not paying for <coughs> half the time they've spent. And do you know who I blame? Consoles. 